I made an Instagram if you guys are interested in following. It's uh, Desert Rat Racer, but Desert underscore Rat underscore Racer. Um, there's another Instagram, which is just Desert Rat Racer, and that's my old one that I got locked out of. So there's really no way of me using that account again. Um, so this is the one you want to follow, and like I'll start posting like updates, more updates and stuff on here, and, uh, short clips if you guys want to watch uh, videos and stuff in between uh, me posting on YouTube. Um, and yeah, plus I'll post pictures of like all the other projects and stuff we're working on. I'm starting to cut into the floor. You can see the rocker panels are just dumping dirt like crazy. Weird. I might cut up as tall as this, but I want to, I really don't want to go taller than this bottom lip right here. Because then I have to start getting into the pillar kind of weird. So I'm going to do my first cut, you know, sideways right under that lip. And, uh... That should be tall enough. If not, I can come up to this lip and then that'll give me more than enough room. Cut, I already got the whole bottom of the rocker panel cut. It's really not pretty. The sawzall is kind of hard to control. So on the cutoff, the, this sideways cut was just killing my uh, cutoff blade. So I'm gonna just fill up the torch and probably just cut it out with the rough cut it with the torch and I can go back and clean everything up with a grinder. All right, well, here's the underneath look right now of the rocker panel. I got a, the majority of it cut out and it's still pretty sturdy so the bracing i did did a good job you can tell like some of this stuff is kind of flimsy but in no way is the car moving or is it structurally messing with anything on this line on the rocker panel i like seriously lost control with the sawzall on the other one i need to be more careful i ended up uh, going further in with it so i can go back with a straight edge and clean it up with a grinder but there's a few spots where it's like, I don't know if it was the dirt in there or if I'm just, you know, couldn't control it, but I could not keep that thing straight. I'm trying to cut smaller and I can go back and like clean up the edges. Like right here, all this, I'm going to pry off and then it'll be the factory lip right here. I just got to cut one more little notch because this right here about stops right here and then it goes up. So I, you know... I need to carry that over and then in about four inches and then this this pulls back out so this is gonna be notched right here now this is over four inches it's like four and a half so I should get plenty of room for the you know the frame to sit up in here and like I said structurally you know I lift up on this and it just tries to lift up the whole body so and that's what I was worried about as soon as I cut this this was gonna like bow up because all the weights on it and I swear I felt like it didn't even move I still I'm gonna have to cut the floorboard some more just a tad right there probably up another inch because we'll see that's where I'm cutting it out from the other side but the floorboard probably needs to come up just a tad bit more even across um, like I said I'm not gonna worry about things too much I'm gonna just get a rough cut fitted and then I can do a final grinding I still got to get this little notch out and then uh, you know this is all perpendicular to the same height as uh, this so you know I know my frame is going to fit good down all in here in the back torque box um, it just depends on how I have to cut it down there this is way harder than I thought especially just it's kind of nerve-wracking because this is the part where I mean I could really mess the car up if I'm not careful so I'm just trying to think things through. I thought I w this notch was cutting too much again, but I went and looked at stuff and did some more measurements and that's basically wh what I'm supposed to be doing. So is this lower part of the torque box might actually, a good chunk of the bottom might get cut out. Um, and actually that whole torque box might just get removed and I'll build off the firewall again. Um, but I was trying to use this back piece if I could um, but if I can't, no big deal. Like I said, just, you know, cut as least off as possible at first. And now, right now, I just made this uh, four-inch notch all the way down. This is the mount that was on the front of the Crown Vic. I just uh, finished drilling out all the spot welds. Oh, it, uh, on this part right here, it sits about this high because it's sitting on those pads. Uh, Should have had this out sooner for reference. I mean, my lines are from eyeballing it, it's pretty much spot on from my measurements and stuff. So, um, you know, it's probably gonna go like right here. So, and again, 
like the outside of that almost matches up to that. Um, this this might just need uh, shaved back right here to be even with the firewall. Like the inside right here is gonna hit this, so it's gonna need to be trimmed. Um, but that's why I wanted to leave a lot of this rocker panel right here in, because you know that could be the bottom whip where that connects to. You know, still a lot of rough cutting and fitting before things get finalized, but ultimately, you know, things are kind of working how uh, it's been planned. All right, right now I'm getting that other um, front mount for the uh, frame bolts. This is off the uh, passenger side. No, this is the driver's side uh, for the Crown Vic or the Mercury Marquis. And I'm just separating it from where I cut it out because I just want the outside skin. Um, you could use a spot weld uh, cutter, but I don't have any right now and I just, you know, got tons of drill bits. So I just drill it out to get rid of most of the spot weld. And then um, some, you know, there's a, a lot of times there's a little bit of metal that hangs up. So I just come in here with, you know, the pry bar. It's got this sharp edge and stuff and you can, you know, you can put the cutters down and you just give it a good tap and uh, you know, it separates the panel pretty good without messing it up. So, all right, now here's the driver's side. Uh, front frame mount that's gonna go in place of the uh, torque boxes. Now it comes time to um, cut some of where the frame like bends and stuff like that. So I wanna use a plumb bob and uh, so I can reference, you know, hold the line at the top and then see where it references down or hold the line at the body or the frame and see where it references down and I can draw my lines to uh, cut the rest of that, that out. I was using a, uh, a carpenter's plumb bob, kind of like the one with the chalk line. And I seen this one at uh, Harbor Freight. It was like three or four bucks. Uh, one of the cheapest ones you can get. It's really nothing fancy. Might be a better way to tie this thing, but uh, it'll get the job done uh, for what I need. So yeah, here's the four inch uh, notch that came all the way back down. And you can see the frame goes straight and then it starts to, uh, it like kicks out and goes over here. So, and then that, needs to be cut into this back torque box. See, I kind of had some uh, reference lines in the past of uh, where I was going to cut. And this is uh, where the rear subframe comes back in. Um, which, you know, a lot of that's going to need to be notched and stuff with uh, what's going on back here. This is where the uh, plumb bob can come in handy. I'll be able to reference points at the top and then have it uh, come down to the frame. All right, so right now, referencing this, once I go straight, I gotta go straight back to about right here, which I already cut before. I went just a little bit further. I went to like right there. I think I had a line drawn before. Right now I'm getting about there. It's no big deal if uh, that's cracked a little bit. But So I gotta take this over to like right here I drew a line because all this is in the way. And then from about here over, crosses over and then into the subframe. Um, and then all that's gotta go up at least four inch. Basically just all this whole bottom layer needs to come out and then this leaf rear leaf spring mount or the front rear leaf spring mount needs to come out, part of the subframe. And uh, that should at least fit all this, this chunk of frame. And then when it squeezes back in and the, the four link uh, on the frame, it actually tucks up in here. So that seems pretty straightforward. Now I just got to see how it's gonna fit up in here. And again, the rear frame, because this is where the spare tire used to go. I had reference before that that's gonna need notched. On the other side, the rear section uh, past the hump, past the axle actually fits right up in there fine. Uh, but I'm just going to do one side at a time, get it to fit good, make sure I'm not making any huge mistakes, and then I'll go uh, mimic it on the other side. So this is the top of the torque box, you know, where I was showing that it's going to need cut out right here. 
And this is about as high. I don't want to cut any higher than this. And again, that's right here is the same height as this, basically. And I know that the frame, the frame roughly being about four inches, will fit in this, the rocker panel. Now, what I was just realizing is how I'm going to reference the height change to know how far I have to go up into here. And so what I'm going to do is run a straight edge on the bottom of the rocker panel right here, coming straight out. And then I need to measure the difference between the top of this and the height of that. So I know that wherever the bottom of this resides, I need to, like say if this is eight inches taller than right here, where I know the top of the frame is gonna sit right there at the most, I know I need to go eight inches up from there. So I'll figure that out. So using this square, it's basically on the highest point of uh, this rear end hump. It's on the bottom of the torque box and it's right up against uh, basically the lowest point of the frame and that's about 14 inches so there's a 14 inch height difference between the lowest part of the frame that's going to tuck up in here and uh, the top of uh, this rear end hump so so real quick I can come off the highest point of this to the part of the torque box it comes out straight and then where it touches the frame. So roughly that's about 14 inches and that's two inches thick. So uh, we're looking at about a foot difference between the tallest, the tallest port or the lowest part of the frame right here and the top part to the top of this hump is about a foot difference. From right here, I need to be able to clearance a foot between the top of this, or roughly where that is, where it tucks up in here, is about a foot different. So that'll give me an idea of where if I don't have a foot clearance, then I know that's where I'm going to need to cut. All right, so knowing this line right here is the top of the torque box, and there's about a foot difference in the frame rail, I knew that I needed about a foot at least to go up here. And it's about, it's a little uh, under an inch short. And that's not counting the fact that I'm gonna need the frame pad here that is also about an inch. So that already lets me know that the top of the floorboard here is about two inches too short. So I'm going to have to cut uh, the very top of this. I knew obviously a lot of this was going to have to go, but the very, very top in there is going to have to be cut through. Is This is the what the gas tank mounted to out of the Crown Vic. And I was keeping it more for reference. I might reuse some of it, but I'm really not a fan of this thin metal. So let's see, if we measure this from the center of this back frame pad, you can't see because of the light. It's about four inches to where the back of the gas tank needs to sit. So the center of that about four inches up, all that's going to have to go straight back. So and that basically matches the line I had up there. It actually could go back about an inch. So we're looking at about from about here down needs to be cut all this completely it's probably about right here and so all this can just tuck up in there with enough room for the gas tank and everything so um, what I'm probably gonna do is go ahead and uh, jack this up and uh, double check some of my measurements and then I'll draw um, where it needs to be cut so after a whole bunch of measurements and looking at this uh, this is where the gas tank's gonna go and then to make room it's about where the frame needs to ride but it needs another inch or so for the frame pad so I'm gonna cut about right here 
then it's got to basically go straight back to make room for the gas tank all the way down. I'm going to have to section uh, this part right here for the frame, this back chunk of frame. And like, on, like I said, on the other side, uh, it doesn't have the spare tire because that's where the gas tank uh, used to go on the other side, which won't be there anymore. So I don't have to notch that. And then it's going to, you know, go straight up. I might have to figure out this part a little bit, but I'm going to wait to do that part a little bit later. Um, so right here is where I was showing on the outside. So it's going to cut, basically come down, and I'm going to cut right along this uh, factory seam. And the strengthened metal uh, down here where the shock towers used to go is kind of all built, leads right up to this edge. So if I cut that, it'll get rid of all that doubled up metal. And so that whole chunk has got to come out. And here's it on the other side. So it's going to come up, follow that line. And so that whole chunk has got to come out. But then that'll give me enough room to completely sit that up in there and rebuild all the new mounting stuff. Same with that line, continued in the back in the spare tire. It's going to roll back here. And then there's the rear subframe that can stay. Um, all right, so right now I'm working at uh, cutting out this back part. Um, where the subframe is right there, I'm just uh, cut at the top and I'm notching it and then I can cut the rest of the subframe. I might go ahead and add in some more bracing because at the time I didn't think I was going to have to come up this high so I had it braced right here um, but since that's going to have to come out um, I might add some more bracing on both sides of that. So yeah when I was doing this I didn't think I thought I was just going to come up as high as this piece of metal right here like see there's you can see the subframe under the floor I thought I was going to come up basically as high as that get rid of the subframe there's some other uh, metal behind here, um, but it, it turns out to really get this to sit down like I want, this all needs to come out and be rebuilt. So this is getting cut out. The only thing I didn't plan for is I used uh, bracing right here. And I'm just a little concerned because now there's a lot of pivot point weight. That whole back half of the car gonna have this big chunk missing plus the subframe I mean the roof and everything does a lot but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, like where the subframes at I should come up and uh, connect to like here at least so I went ahead and added just a couple little uh, more bracing things right there and then of course you know I'm plasma cutting all this I got to cut there across and down you can kind of see where it's cut already right there and then all of this is going to get dropped. Um, and then basically where the uh, subframe rides, I can cut through most of this with a plasma cutter, but where the subframe uh, rides, I got like a nine inch sawzall blade, so I can just go down through here and just uh, chop them off. It's not the prettiest thing, but uh, I just need to get it done. Then you can see down here where I already notched uh, for the frame to go where the uh, spare tire used to go. And it's gonna I kind of messed up right here I wasn't sure what I was doing it needs to cut across more and go back um, that's not too big of a deal though I think I only overcut by a couple inches um, but yeah basically this is already cut with the subframe down all the way across here and up a little bit and then I started to go through that and that's where I broke the blade so that's where I stopped the other day so I gotta go through there finish cutting that and then back across this line and then cut the two front uh, subframes and this connector and this whole chunk uh, should pop out. One thing I'm still not really sure what I'm doing on or doing with this yet is this is where like the basement door uh, or whatever you want to call this, the compartment door, that's the hinge right there. And so I need to, this is going to be shortened fundamentally. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to attack that if I'm going to shorten the doors or make a new door or how that's gonna work but so something I'm thinking about
All right. Well, there it is cut out. Uh, once I cut it out, I cut the this last support and notched it so a chunk came out and I was able to pry it and then pull it out the side. So it's basically one big hole. Um, I probably wish I could add a little bit more support. It's not bad, so but I'm not I'm not necessarily confident in lifting up the body from where it stands. I'm probably gonna get some more jack stands under here a little bit just to help you know offset any stress. All right, that's still about as high as it can go in right now. And if uh, some of you are not remembering or questioning why it's so big, the gas uh, gas tank still has to go back there. So there's gonna be like the hump and then back for the gas tank. But that's the bumper mount. But I get that has to be cut now. And then this should be able to tuck up in there. And same with that side. And that side, of course, didn't have anything really in the way because the gas tank was over there. And so it doesn't need notched. Uh, like this side, it just needs the uh, bumper, the bumper mounts moved. So one of the dilemmas I was running into with this is this is the bumper mount right here and this is the last frame mount and this hits right here. So what I'm deciding to do is just cut this right here and so this can all slide right up in here and then I'll be able to retain the bumper mount and then I'll just have to uh, also for the sake of where the frame pad is going to come up it was potentially going to come up in a weird spot right here. So by cutting this, I'm going to probably move it forward and I'll be able to tuck the uh, mounting point uh, up in here more where the original uh, subframe was. And really this isn't even that firm of a piece. This will be removed. It's still not strong enough. I'll run another bar from the bottom across uh, to the other side. All right, so I just drew a line basically where I'm cutting it. So it'll kind of retain the same box. Feel. I don't want to go too far this way in case I want to use uh, this original bumper mount again. So I'm going to cut on this side of the line just enough to where I can keep uh, this circle. Um, so it won't be perfectly square back, but uh, I think that's the best option. Got that notched off right there. Now the uh, rear frame rails will fit up, fit up there. And then these will get remounted up further. See, this up. is a good place to start because it'll always get it to fit up in here. All right, so this is the driver's side. I got this whole notch cut out uh, pretty good. And if you look down here, this uh, this side came out way better on the bottom of the rocker panel. Um, but you could tell like a lot of that was the plasma cutter. And then right here, I'd use the. Sawzall for a bit and you could tell as soon as I use the sawzall again, I'm like Can't go straight. I think a lot of it was just the angle And uh, stuff I just couldn't really get a good angle so both the uh, fronts are cut out and basically the only thing that's left To cut to at least to start test fitting better is these uh, back torque boxes So that has to be done on both sides and this high part should be fine I just need to cut the bottom out and the frame, you know kind of s S turns a little bit right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to jack up the whole frame. Try to get this little bend right here to press up against that torque box 100%. And then I'll draw it out and uh, so I, I can cut it without, uh, you know, cutting out too much. All right, so this is the furthest I got the front to tuck in so far. I had to go and trim the edge a little bit, um, but it clearly, I need to cut I'm clearly going to have to cut up higher here. The main goal right now is everything's cut good enough to test fit except for this rear torque box. So the idea was get the frame smushed up against it, which it is. Now I'll go under here and I'll mark where the frame goes like this and then turns back. And then I can uh, figure out exactly how I'm going to cut that. Once that's cut, then it's all just fine tuning, uh, getting the frame up in there and then I can start mounting it. All right, so I'm glad I did it this way. You know, I was able to get the frame tucked up high enough now to where it sandwiches right here in the last little spot I got to cut. And I was concerned 
that the subframe back here would get in the way, but it just clears it right there. Because I see, I had initially thought that I was going to have to take a chunk out right here, but now that I'm able to uh, fully sandwich it up against it and uh, fit it, I only have to cut. I only have to cut on that red line. And then back here, there's a, like a leaf spring mount. That's what you see in the middle. That used to mount the front of the rear leaf spring. Um, so that's got to go out. And then basically, this is how I had it a long time ago. So this was pretty spot on because X, the X is where I knew it all had to be disappeared. Or all, all had to be cut out. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. And it's like that on both sides. I centered it pretty decent. Um, and again, all these are just rough cuts. So the only other little challenge is this vertical piece in here is going to be a pain. Um, but what I'll probably do is, you know, just cut out the bottoms and then I'll trim along the edge so I can expose the vertical piece and then I'll go in there and uh, cut it off sideways. And again, this is the driver's side. You can see the leaf spring mount right there that's got to go. And then, you know, same difference, just gets cut right here and then back and then all that. It's got to go. Then hopefully, uh, yeah, you can see that line from where I cut back and it just goes at an angle. And then you can see where it clears the subframe. And then the only other thing that's kind of an issue is the emergency brake bracket. You can see it upside down right there. That is on the frame would actually hit the subframe. So there's the emergency brake, brake bracket and that would hit the subframe. But what I'll do is I'll just remove that bracket, probably reattach it on the other side. Not this side, but the other side of the subframe. So it, it'll do its job pr plenty fine right there, and then I won't have to cut into this lower portion of that. Because um, this is where the rear frame mount is going to reattach. So I'm going to rebuild this rear subframe different to re uh, reattach the frame to. And so it'll be fundamentally like the Crown Vic was, it's just a lot more heavy duty, which... Um, I'm, I'm kind of more leaning towards a heavier, stronger vehicle than like say a lighter one. So now that I know where to cut this at, I'll go ahead and uh, lower the frame back down and uh, do this last rough cut. And then uh, the frame should uh, theoretically uh, tuck up into place. All right, now with the frame out of the way, we can see it better. This is where I notched uh, the four inch notch all the way back. And theoretically, it didn't need to be quite that wide back here, but um, I did make it so there was a lot of wiggle room. So when I marked it, that's pretty much exactly where the frame rides. So we could actually go out to where my original mark was because um, it gives it, you know, more wiggle room. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to cut it uh, pretty much right here. So you know, I just gotta cut to here, basically across this, and then uh, cut here, across to here, and then this whole bottom part has to come out, and then there's a back to that that has to go out basically to the top. So all the way up, up in there, and then this leaf spring mounts in the way. And uh, just for right now, I'll probably just hack it off on uh, both sides. Um, but this is the last, and then right here is the chunk of subframe that can remain. And then this is the last little section that I'm a little worried about cutting this out and uh, seeing how the body's going to take this being cut out. So, um, But I might go ahead and throw in another, since I don't have to cut this, I might go ahead and throw in another jack stand right here just to help, uh, you know, capture some more weight. All right, so I went ahead and threw uh, some more jack stands under the subframe. So there's uh, this one where I put in the mounts, where you see the mount goes to the floorboard. 
Um, well, that's the one in the back. You can see where that mount goes to the floorboard. That's where uh, this jack stands at. And then I put one on the subframe, last little bit of the subframe back here because I didn't have to cut into it. So I got this pretty much cut out, this torque box. So there was still a bit of rocker panel here. And then it went into this like roll pan that went up and then the torque box that had come to here. So went ahead and cut that and then got up in here and then cut it along the floor where it's uh, there's a seam. And then the leaf spring mount was here. I went and just hacked off both sides. That's uh, this right here. It was up in there. And then I just had to come in here and uh, finalize the edge on the inside and then cut out uh, more of the rocker panel on the inside because I want to retain uh, this floor because the frame shouldn't go any higher. Although for this one, there's going to be a frame mount right here. Um, so I'll probably drill a hole and make like a little nub for the bolt to stick through just to help with clearance. All right, so I got both sides cut, um, but it was still getting hung up. So what I did was again, um, installed the uh, rear springs so and put tension on it so I can center the wheel and its travel. And again, I just want to make sure that the, because the goal is to have the centered back here. It looks like it needs to go forward just a tad, but I'm going to measure it. But uh, this is fitting halfway decent. Uh, this is still a little short right here. So yeah, it's just pretty much on both sides right now. It's getting caught like just on this little lip. So probably just need to cut it back further here and be good. Just to make sure I want to, you know, get this back up to where this kind of where right height's going to be on the rear end. Make sure it's centered. I'm going to test fit the front fenders again just to see uh, how it looks and, uh, you know, jack up the front too and uh, get a better idea of what's going on. And it's kind of hard to determine because it only needs to go up a little bit more right here. So what I might do in the meantime, I knew these were going to have to be cut, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to rebuild the, the subframe to mount the body tube back here. So uh, I knew this was going to be tight, but I'll probably just come in here and just cut it down straight. And if uh, I might just peel back some of the skin right here on the top. Uh, so when I rebuild the frame, it'll be like halfway sticking out like this when it comes up. Um, we'll see and I'll just box the end or something. It's gonna be hard to know exactly where this is centered until it's perfectly tucked up and a whole bunch of all the weights on the spring. So I don't wanna jump to cutting too much out here yet. I'm gonna cut this cause I know and I'm gonna just get it to fit any way it'll fit. And then I'll worry about fine tuning whether it needs to go forward or backwards. Okay, so right now I trimmed what was a little bit of a trouble spot right here where that's no longer a trouble spot. I went ahead and uh, cut the subframes a little bit more right there because uh, I thought they were an issue, but it turned out um, back here where I cut is not fully seating. So there's like a solid inch and a half, inch it could go up more. It's hitting uh, some metal up here that needs cut a little bit better. So I gotta do that. I'm gonna double check the measurement. I feel like that wheel's pretty centered. It could go, actually, it looks like it could go forward just a touch more. Um, but if those don't really go forward more, then I gotta cut these uh, four pan supports back a little bit because they were hitting when I was trying to raise it up right now, so. Basically now I'm just massaging like little spots and uh, I should tuck in. So I got it to about this stage. Um, I'm just realizing a few things like where the frame's at right here because I don't want to have to cut up here. I'm probably going to have to cut the frame back a couple inches and then it can tuck up more without having to get into here. These back subframes, I hacked them off more, but they need to go probably at an angle at least uh, to correspond with the frame. And then 
these are probably gonna be an issue these are body mounts I plan on tying the body mounts into these uh, as part of the floor pan support but I'm gonna have to probably get them out of the way for now and then see you can see it's actually touching it right now so that that floor pan supports got to go and I'm probably gonna trim the bottom of this what was left of the torque box off just to make more room and I, I need to clean up uh, this edge you know things like that so it's uh and this side's actually fitting even better. So, yeah, you can see on this one, four pan support. But so I'm gonna have to make all those little adjustments before I can uh, fully set up. All right, so I'm out here just cutting the last little bits. Like I cut, uh, more off of this that was even with the top of the four pan support and I cut the top of the four pan support off at an angle I'll clean that up with a grinder and box that off uh, as long as it's not in the way anymore uh, but both of those were hitting the frame uh, now I got to get under there cut more of the four pan support out where it's gonna hit and a few other spots all right so I got it up test fitting more now it's even higher I feel like it's hitting something back here somewhere. A little bit, I can't quite tell. But also the frame's not level. So, right now it's hitting uh, right here a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and mark it right here and uh, cut up on both sides and get the uh, frame more level. All right, so there's probably a couple little issues I'm not seeing, but it's getting really close uh, to being tucked up in there now. Um, it's still uh, still down further than I want because I want to barely be able to see it. And I ran into an issue I wasn't expecting that where the front frame mounts go, it's hitting the floorboard. Um, so I'm gonna have to, it's gonna hit right there too on the, so I'm just gonna round that corner of the four pan supports because I don't wanna cut those anymore. Um, but I'm probably gonna have to notch the four pan. So because the frame is hitting the floorboard about right here, the plan is to cut out this section of floorboard and then I'm gonna do like a dotted line right here and just bend this back. All right, so I cut the floor pan right here and I did the whole pan because if I'm gonna move any of it up, I wanted it to be equal. Then I put notches right here. See so like a stress relief so it'll bend on the notch. And this is pulled out a little too far right now. But you can see with that pulled back, now there's uh, plenty of room for the frame and it can it's gonna set back a little bit more. But that's pretty much uh, tucking up uh, as high as it's gonna go. The only thing holding it now is uh, just these rough edges. I need to go in here and grind everything smooth. So I went ahead and clearance both sides for now. This side of the floorboard is, I got all the fiberglass off. It's all rotted, so that's gonna have to be fixed anyways. But I just duplicated the other side. And now the big issue is all these rough edges down here. So like this spot particularly, that's where the frame was sitting, that little triangle that's sticking down. Um, and it needs to go, everything needs to be equal to this, this piece right here. So everything below that needs to go. But I'm gonna have to do this all the way down. So like you see right here on the inside of the roll pan. It's uh, pretty low down right here. All right, so now I'm removing uh, the, the floor pan whip because the floor pan came over, came up, and then it was spot welded right here. And I just cut it previously. I'm going to try to get rid of this uh, whip first. And, and then uh, anything else that needs to come up will be grinded away. But the uh, I tried a few methods on this. I tried uh, Dremel grinding away and then prying and then uh, a torch method. And uh, the spot weld cutter uh, really does seem to be doing the best right now. I was a little concerned about the room I have in here, but 
seems to be doing okay for now. So I just gotta peel all the rest of this out on both sides uh, to start cleaning up uh, this last little clearance. All right, I finished cutting out the driver's side in the front. Definitely like a lot of this is still rough edges. But you can barely see the frame like right there, that like black line. And then up here where you see it more, the fender is going to cover all that. Still looks like it's hitting a little bit right there. I just got to, you know, lots of little tweaks and stuff. And then I need to test fit the tires in the back, the uh, rims. Because these are a different offset than the stock uh, Crown Vic wheels. So I got to throw those on and uh, make sure they'll tuck in the fenders. Put the engine in too. And I uh, see how it meets up against the firewall. All right, so here's the driver's side. So like I said, if I don't have to, I don't want to go past this point. And so this is like a little too a little too close so this can uh, probably go down a little and this side honestly is gapped pretty good you know I don't want to go much closer than that I can basically get my pinky in there so I got to give it some room to breathe all right I went ahead and sat it down uh, to see what it looks like the back is a little off center, like it can definitely go uh, towards the driver's side a little bit more. Like right now it has the uh, higher springs in the back. If I wanted to put on some lowering springs or something, I would definitely need to do something with that fender. And once the tailgate's on and like I'm really like bogging this thing, like, but yeah, that's not good. Either I got to do something with some wheels or tires or probably the fender makes the most sense. But uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, you don't even really see the frame. And it's going to sit lower still. Once uh, more, there's more weight on it. It sits a little higher than I thought, but it doesn't look bad. Looks pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not stressing about the fender too much because uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the engine in next just to uh, get a feel for how that's going to sit. Uh, just, you know, start wrapping my brain around that and make sure that doesn't conflict with how I'm going to mount the frame. So. All right, well, I went ahead and got the uh, engine in. So the engine fits pretty good. It rubs up against the uh, ABS lines uh, right there just a little bit. Um, so that can either, you know, be adjusted or remounted a little different. Um, it's freestanding in here right now, um, just sitting in the mounts. And this is the uh, Crown Vic motor mounts that were on the frame. They just bolted right up. Um, there looks like there might be enough gap to get the manual bell housing in here, but if anything, it's just minimal uh, firewall um, cutting. I was a little afraid because how the cowls are so different. Housing should fit in there without too much trouble. This isn't sitting uh, too bad. I mean, that's not a crazy uh, cowl hood. Shouldn't be too bad. The uh, front wheel being a little further forward doesn't look bad. It almost looks, because of the way the fender sloped, it looks pretty good. It's a little tight in the front. Um, if anything, we could maybe cut the fender and cut, you see how this swoops? We could cut the fender and like make it swoop just down a little bit more and get rid of that tight edge. And with the frame being tucked, I think that's good. And then for any lower we need to go, we need to mess with the suspension. And then uh, we're definitely gonna have to do something back here. And the other thing that caught me off guard is, uh, you can see the frame right here in the front, but it's not too bad, especially once we lower it. And then I might, I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do about fender wells or things like that. You know, it doesn't look bad, but you do see it. So this is pretty much the video on me notching the frame or the body to fit the frame and then doing uh, some test fitting. I just, uh, the next video is gonna be fine tuning. So I'm gonna take this back out and clean up all the edges, like get everything start for fit and finish and then start uh, welding in the mounts and uh, things like that.